For this example, we're going to determine where the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 9x minus 18 is positive and where it's negative. So to do this, what we're going to really be doing is more or less solving a, a nonlinear inequality. And it's a consequence of the intermediate value theorem that a function can only go from positive to negative or negative to positive at places where the function is either zero or undefined. And so the first thing we need to do is find out where is this function zero and undefined. Um, so to find out where it's zero, we're going to need to factor this. Now it is also a quadratic, so we could just use the quadratic equation to find those roots also. Um, but we'll go ahead and practice factoring here. When we are trying to factor, we need to find two numbers that multiply to give us uh, the value of a times c. a times c would be the 2 times the uh, negative 18 in this case. So we're really looking at negative 36. So um, we need two numbers that multiply to give us negative 36 that add to give us uh, negative 9. And so uh, thinking ahead, uh, 36 would be uh, 3 times 12. So if we take the 12 to be the negative 1, we would have um, 3 times uh, negative 12 would also give us the negative 36, whereas 3 plus the negative 12 will give us the negative 9, which is our b that we want. And so that's how we split the middle term. We have um, f of x is going to equal the 2x squared uh, plus 3x minus 12x and then minus the 18. So we split up the negative 9x into positive 3x minus 12x. And then we factor by grouping. Taking the first two terms and the last two terms is two um, is paired off, grouping them that way. Uh, the first two terms, the common factor is x. Uh, when we pull out the x, we are left with 2x plus 3. And then looking ahead, we know we're going to need 2x plus 3 over here. And so we think ahead and realize that what we need to pull out there then is not positive 6, but a negative 6. Um, then we have uh, the separation here by this subtraction sign. Looking before and after the subtraction sign, the part that's in parentheses is matching. And so we'd have 2x plus 3 being that common factor from the two terms that are separated by the subtraction sign. And then what's left over is the parts that are out front in each one, the x minus the 6. And so that would be our factorization for f of x. And so what we need to know is where is f of x equal to 0 and where is it undefined? Well, f is equal to 0 whenever either one of these factors is equal to 0. So we've got 2x plus 3 equal to 0, and we have x minus 6 equal to 0. We're using something called the zero product property here to solve this uh, equal to 0. So that gives us the root x equals negative 3 halves for the first one and x equals 6 for the second one. Um, and we also know that f is never undefined. So we could... Um, I'm putting it here as part of the solution just so that you know that we do need to check that also because if we're using the intermediate value theorem here, uh, we've got to be looking at a continuous place. So we need to know where it's not continuous, so not defined. And so f is uh, undefined nowhere um, because it's a polynomial. It's defined everywhere. So uh, the only two places we care about are negative 3 halves and 6. And so what we need to do then is we need to put those values on our number line here. I'm going to label this number line with f because it's the function f that we're trying to assess positive and negative for. And the values that we got um, by setting the function equal to 0 and undefined land on the uh, number line. Um, notice I have tick marks there. Those are the important places, the only potential places where the sign could change. Um, these other things that I'm going to put in parentheses here are really test values. Um, and so, let's see, negative 3 halves, that's like negative 1 and a half. So let's go ahead and put negative 2. That would be on the other side. Um, 0 would be between the positive and the negative number. And then we'll go ahead and put 7 over here. Okay. So these uh, that I'm putting in parentheses are not extra tick values. They're just kind of um, test values that I'm going to kind of keep track of here. So when I am... Um, 
assessing each interval, what I do is I take that test value and I plug it back into the factored form of our um, polynomial. So here is our factored form of our polynomial, and I'm just testing what the sign would be for each factor because I don't really care the value at all. I care only about the sign. And so when I take in negative 2, I've got 2 times negative 2 plus 3. So that would be negative 4 plus 3, so that would be a negative value. When I put in negative 2 to the next factor, it's negative 2 minus 6, so that's also negative. And we have a negative times a negative is overall positive. And then we move to the next interval. When I plug in 0 to the first factor, 2 times 0 plus 3 is positive 3, so I've got a positive. Plug in 0 to the second factor, 0 minus 6 is negative 6, so it's negative. And then overall, I have a positive times a negative, so we're looking at a negative. Finally, as we move to, um, to the test value of 7, 2 times 7 plus 3, that would be a positive value. Um, 7 minus 6, that factor is now finally positive. So we've got positive over, or positive times positive would be positive. And so uh, the circled signs are really the signs for each individual interval. And so as our final conclusion, uh, we've got positive for uh, the interval negative infinity to uh, negative 3 halves. And then we pick back up at positive from uh, 6 to infinity. So I just started at the left-hand side of my um, number line and picked up intervals that were positive. Uh, negative, we have um, just that middle interval that range from negative 3 halves to 6. And so our final answer there would be um, what's boxed uh, given our answer there in interval notation.